peace treaty in Jerusalem. I believe the world will watch it unfold. I believe every major news network will cover it. I believe it will be the trending event on people's tablets and smartphones. They will watch this political leader who has risen out of the dust and the aftermath of the chaos of the rapture of the church as a one world leader establishing a one world government, a one world monetary system, a one world religion, and a one world military power to enforce his satanic goals, plans, and mandates. But the day the tribulation age begins is when he signs that peace treaty. And the day that tribulation age ends is with the second coming of Jesus Christ. It is the second coming of Jesus Christ that ends suddenly the tribulation age. The third age is the kingdom age. And the kingdom age, uh, as I mentioned, the second coming of Christ ends the tribulation uh, age and ushers in what is called the kingdom age. Uh, the kingdom age is sometimes known as the millennium or the millennial reign of Christ. And it is called in theological circles the kingdom age. So if uh, you want to clarify that in your notes, just be sure to write down the kingdom age is also the millennium or the millennial reign of Christ. Those three theological terms are synonymous. The kingdom age, the millennium, the millennial reign of Christ all speak of the exact same thing. Where do we find the kingdom age in the book of Revelation? The kingdom age is found in the 20th chapter of the book of Revelation. And so as you're reading the book of Revelation, Revelation chapter 1, 2, and 3, that's the church age. The church age ends with the rapture, ushers us in to the tribulation age. The tribulation age is from Revelation chapter 4 through Revelation chapter 19. The tribulation age begins with the signing of the peace treaty by the Antichrist, ends with the second coming, and ushers us into the kingdom age. How long will the kingdom age last? Exactly 1,000 years. And again, 1,000 years uh, by the marking of 360 calendar days. One notable theologian penned these words, quite interesting, listen to them. He said, quote, all of history, is moving towards this grand climax. The kingdom of God on earth. That's what Revelation is all about. Christ's coming to inherit the kingdom. Revelation shows us that all of history is under God's control and that history is headed somewhere and that it is all tied to the person and work of Jesus Christ. There is a simple but profound biblical truth here which can never be overemphasized apart from the person and redeeming work of Jesus Christ. History is an enigma. Christ and Christ alone has the key to the meaning of human history. Apart from the victorious reign of Christ, history is going nowhere. That's powerful. Let me just read that last part again. Christ and Christ alone has the key to the meaning of human history. Apart from the victorious return of Christ, history is going nowhere. 
And that brings us to the fourth and final age of the book of Revelation, and that is the eternal age. Number one, the church age. Number two, the tribulation age. Number three, the kingdom age. And number four, the eternal age. At the end of the kingdom age, the millennial reign of Christ, the eternal age begins immediately thereafter. The millennium, the kingdom age, 1,000 years in length, at the end of that 1,000 years, we are ushered into the fourth age of the book of Revelation, which is called the eternal age. The eternal age is the final state of God's prophetic program, and it will begin with the destruction of this present heaven and this present earth and the creation of a new heaven and a new earth. That's why I don't get all excited about environmentalism and the new Green Deal and loving Mother Earth. And listen, I do believe in respecting the planet. I do believe that we should take care of everything that God gave to us. When we read the beginning creation story in Adam and Eve, it is apparent there that God gave to Adam authority and dominion to rule and to reign and to protect and to preserve this planet. But man in his sin, listen, man in all of his sin destroys everything that he touches. That's why supposedly the most brilliant leadership, the highest of offices, presidents, kings, world luminaries, it doesn't matter who you put in charge, if they are living under the curse of sin with all of their efforts, with all of their political agendas, with all of their plans, everything they touch goes to hell in a handbasket because man cannot function in proper harmony unless you have right relationship with God. And it's true for some of you that might be listening to me. If you're not walking in obedience to God, if you're not walking in harmony with the covenants of Scripture, then don't be surprised that no matter how hard you work, no matter how hard you try, no matter what effort you make, life just seems to go to hell in a handbasket. But when you receive Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, He breaks the curse of sin. He breaks the curse of sickness and disease. He breaks the curse of lack. He breaks the curse of futility and gives you purpose and life and hope. There is an age coming where you can eternally walk in relationship with God and know the joy of eternal life. forever be the capital city of God's new order. The Bible tells us that the Lord will reign forever 
and his people will serve him and reign with him throughout eternity. Where do we find the eternal age in the book of Revelation? It is found in the last two chapters, Revelation chapter 21 and Revelation chapter 22. How long will the eternal age last? Self-explanatory, ageless, throughout eternity. And there you have the four ages in the book of Revelation. And when you understand these classifications, uh, we begin by showing you in Revelation chapter 1 and verse 19 the natural biblical outline that God gave to us when he gave to us the book of Revelation. And then we broke down for you today the four ages throughout the reading of that outline. It began with the church age in Revelation chapters 1, 2, and 3. The church age ends with the rapture of the church. And that takes us into the second age, which is the tribulation age. The tribulation age begins when? When the Antichrist signs that seven-year peace treaty with Israel, Daniel chapter 9 and verse 27. The tribulation age ends with the second coming of Christ, which takes us from the church age through the tribulation age into the kingdom age or the millennium or the millennial reign of Christ. The tribulation age lasts seven years. The kingdom age lasts 1,000 years. And the eternal age lasts forever and forever. One scholar wrote these words. Listen carefully. He said, this world will not continue on forever throughout infinite cycles of history. Bible prophecy reveals to us that there is an end. It reveals to us that there is a purpose and a goal for this world, for creation, for humanity, and for everyday life. Knowing this truth gives us meaning, perspective, and purpose and helps us embrace hope in life. Bible prophecy is the vehicle God has given us to reveal His plan for history and to provide a goal in our thinking about life and its ultimate meaning and purpose." End quote. So I hope this Bible study as a foundation of understanding the book of Revelation, the four ages of the book of Revelation will serve you as you become a better student in studying this great apocalyptic book. It is so powerful and tells us exactly what is coming next. Most importantly, it should help us to live ready. It should motivate us to live holy. Are you ready for what is coming? Let me read to you one last passage of Scripture and then we'll pray. Uh, go to the end of the book, Revelation chapter uh, 21. 22 chapters in the book of Revelation. Revelation chapter 21. Go down to verse 5 and let me read to you verses 5 through 8 and then we'll pray. The Bible says, And the one sitting on the throne said, Look, I am making everything new. And then he said to me, Write this down, for what I tell you is trustworthy and true. And he also said, It is finished. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To all who are thirsty, I will give freely from the springs of the water of life. All who are victorious will inherit all these blessings, and I will be their God, and they will be my children. 
but cowards, unbelievers, the corrupt, murderers, the immoral, those who practice witchcraft, idol worshipers, and all liars. Their fate is in the fiery lake of burning sulfur. This is the second death. That, my friend, is a convicting passage of Scripture. And I want you to live ready to meet the Lord. I don't know how many times I've repeated to you, if all you do is sit with me and learn the Bible and acquire intellectual trivia about prophecy and the book of Revelation and Daniel and 1 Thessalonians and 2 Thessalonians and all kinds of prophetic passages, and all you have is this intellectual ascent to Bible knowledge, but you have never inwardly acknowledged your sin, repented of your sin, and received God's only mediator, His only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, then you, my friend, will be separated from God eternally. And so let me pray with you. I'm not here to judge you or to condemn you. I genuinely want you to live ready to meet the Lord. He's coming very soon. Over 400 times in the Bible, we are promised the return of the Lord Jesus Christ. And since Bible prophecy is 100% accurate, did you know that? Of all of the prophecies in the Bible, all that have been fulfilled thus far, over 80% of the prophecies in the Bible already fulfilled with complete and total accuracy. It gives us reasonable faith to believe that these remaining prophecies will equally come to pass. And so with that in mind, you and I need to live ready to meet the Lord every day. So if you're not sure as to where you stand with God, will you pray with me? You can make peace with God right here, right now. Three things every person has to do to have a right relationship with God. Number one, you have to recognize your sin. The Bible says all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. None of us have a perfect track record. All have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Not only do you have to recognize your sin, the Bible says you must repent of your sin. Jesus said in Luke 13,